Um, good morning. Uh, nice to meet everybody virtually, and thanks, Christine, for uh, having me um, and the kind introduction. Um, let's just get started. Uh, I know we're a little bit short on time um, than we originally intended, um, and you know I just want to keep this session interactive, um, you know, so that everyone can uh, can participate, um, and that's one of the reasons why we had the the, the survey from the very beginning. Um, got some very very nice feedbacks, and then hopefully we can. Uh, dive deeper into these responses and, and talk about some of these key points that you guys raised um, in your responses. Um, so let me share my screen real quick. Um, just so excited to, to be back with the Hawkins crowd um, and tell you guys a little bit more about my experience. Um, and uh, so you know, here's pretty much the agenda. Um, you know, as PhDs, we always have to have a very structured presentation. So we gotta have the agenda. Um, I'll share with you a little bit more about my experiences, the companies that I work with, um, and then hopefully that'll give you a little bit of um, sort of an insight of you know how I got some of my perspectives and and and, and way of looking at things and different viewpoints, um, and then we'll dive a little deeper into the industry. Um, you know, I think as a graduate student and those who are looking out from the outside into the consulting industry, um, there's sort of a, a little bit of um, different perspectives of what the industry looks like, um, certain areas that you may not be aware of um, and how the industry are typically sort of dissected um, and, and evaluated in different ways. Um, but I think another important uh, point to think about is what does a uh, consulting firm actually look like, the hierarchy? Because um, it's very important for your career progression um, and how you're gonna interact with your colleagues and, and what kind of roles and type of uh, responsibilities that you have, uh, which is the, the next topic um, on the agenda, right? Um, and maybe I'll share a little bit with you guys what my day-to-day -day use case looked like. Um, so you get an idea of uh, what my experiences were like and what you like about it and what you don't like about it so you can avoid it um, in the future. Um, and I think, um, oh, a little typo here, but like exiting consulting, um, I think it's a huge um, aspect too. Uh, and I think we want to talk about, you know, why consulting is a great long-term option, but at the same time, you know, why so many people tend to leave the industry at, uh, as well. And of course, you know, I don't want to leave you guys without any resources. So I'll share a little bit with you what my um, um, experience was like in terms of getting a job and what resources I, I utilized on campus. Um, certainly, you know, things have changed many years ago. So hopefully, uh, you know, these are still relevant um, resources for you guys. And if we have time, then we can, you know, jump into a very, very simple um, cases. We can break out in teams. Just want to, you know, test your approach, put you in, on the spot and then see if, uh, you know, we can get something out of that. Um, all right, well, let's start with um, my experiences. Um, as Christine alluded, um, I completed my PhD here at Hopkins. Um, I was uh, doing my thesis research with um, Dr. Jun Lu. Uh, hopefully some of you may have heard of my, my, uh, my PI from the pharmacology department. I uh, was particularly working on um, small molecule um, target ID type of work, um, you know, characterizing drug mechanisms. Um, and when I was a PhD student here at Hopkins, um, I participated in a lot of extracurriculum activities, um, uh, such as, you know, being part of the Hopkins Graduate Consulting Club, um, which I hope some of you um, are also part of. Um, it's, a, it's a great um, community. We're so proud of what we've done so far and how far some of our um, leaders and alumni have, have gone in the industry. Um, I was also part of the iCourse program. Uh, maybe we can talk about that, or if any of you guys are interested or know about it, uh, feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, it's a startup program here. I don't know if, if JHTV still does that, but um, you know they give a small chunks of money for some really cool ideas just to get um, you know students and their groups started, um, and and it really teaches you how to be an entrepreneur. Um, so I learned a lot from that program. So just want to highlight it here. Um, the other is I was part of um, the uh, a lot of the initiatives that the professional development office here at the um, um, medical campus um, are trying to accomplish, um, such as being, um, you know, starting an advisory committee for students um, from different career groups around campus um, to kind of guide the agenda and sort of how the resources are distributed on campus uh, for student career um, related uh, missions. Uh, so I was part of the BCI Edge Student Advisory Committee, the first one. Um, and ultimately, I also did an internship uh, with Booz Allen uh, during my fifth year um, here uh, as a PhD student. So 
So yeah, so hopefully that gives you a, a very quick snapshot of my time here at Hopkins. And, and other than that, you know, after I graduated, I started pursuing a master training about informatics. Um, and, uh, and I'll explain a little bit more how that contributed to, to, to my work in consulting as well. So uh, more on the professional side. So um, as Christine mentioned, I, I started uh, as a senior consultant at Booz Allen Hamilton. Um, and uh, ultimately, I was promoted as an associate um, uh, about a year ago. Um, after that, I've left the industry and, and joined a, a private equity firm called KKR uh, here in New York um, as a property manager. So just a little bit about our company, uh, my companies that I've, uh, I've been part of. Um, you know, hopefully some of you have heard of Booz Allen Hamilton. Uh, you know, we're one of the biggest and oldest consulting firm, um, you know, in the world. Um, and we're definitely one of the top players in the, the federal space. Um, so we do a lot of public contracting um, for the federal government. Um, we're particularly known for our IT digital transformation, business transformation, change management um, type of consulting services. Um, and since then, as I mentioned, I've been uh, with KKR. Um, you know, we're a global investment company that manages you know, over 60, uh, $650 billion worth of uh, assets um, that varies across um, energy, infrastructure, uh, real estate, um, credits, and, and all kinds of different types of uh, hedge funds. Um, so right now, um, you know, I am part of the project teams here that specializes in digital transformation um, and data analytics. Um, so that's not technically consulting, but um, still have a lot of attributes that are similar to what I used to be uh, as a contractor. Uh, definitely a lot of uh, transferable skills as well. Um, before we, we start, any questions? Anyone want to, you know, ask anything about my experiences um, or any comments? Don't be shy. Okay. Um, if not, I think you guys are probably more interested in about the industry than about me. So we can jump straight ahead. So um, this is a very old diagram. As you can probably see from um, the quality of uh, the graphics and, and Deloitte's um, logo. Definitely that's not what they look like right now. Um, but I think it's very important um, for, for us who are interested in the industry to understand, you know, what are the different variations and subtypes of consulting uh, there is. Um, I, I do see a question from Wesley, so um, I'll address that in a bit. Um, thanks for uh, for bringing that up. Um, but back to this slide here, um, I think it's very important for us to under, understand the subgroups and differentiate what are the different types of consulting because, you know, I, I looked at a lot of your responses from, you know, what you think consulting is. Um, you know, I think there is a little bit of um, flavor into your responses that hints at the different kinds of consulting, but it seems like in, in general, everyone thinks, you know, it's, it's more about giving advice to a client um, and, and, and helping out a company uh, but I think there's a lot more to that, right? I think there's different ways of how uh, a consulting company can help a client and what there are different services that different types of clients are, are looking for. And, and, and each of them have their, um, you know, each of them has their pros and cons and, and their sort of um, little stories that are unique. Um, and I think it's important to think about those different points when you're looking for um, a job for a company um, so that your expectations align and you can, you know, best, you um, Utilize your skill sets um, to, to whatever purpose that that company is is trying to to serve. Um, so you know, I think just real quick, um, you know, obviously we have the, the most popular and, and common type of consulting that we're all aware of. I think you know most of your your responses falls under this this kind of consulting, which is the strategy consulting, right? Um, you know, a lot of the big names, the big uh, you know big companies that we're aware of, the McKinsey's, the BCG, the Bain's, they they are pretty much the, the key players in there. Um, they're known to pretty much um, the, the stereotype of consulting, right? You know, pick up your suitcase, go into the client site for a couple of weeks, you know, say something smart and then like goodbye, good luck with the rest of your, your journey, right? Um, so that's more strategy based, right? Um, as the name, it's, it's, it's shown here. Uh, it's, there's nothing much to really explain about that. It, you're really just going in and provide a strategy, whether short term or long term. And that's pretty much the scope um, of the contract there. Um, then you know that you have something that's a little bit more involved, right? You have the business transformations and, and implementations. So that means some of these consulting firms actually stay within their contract beyond the strategy um, phases and, and provide 
um, actionables that actually leads to the fruition, right? Of uh, the strategy that they provide it. Um, so we can see a lot of the big four companies are in this. Uh, I saw a response from you guys that talked about providing financial services. So that's obviously a very um, natural kind of transformation and implementation. Like for example, um, you know, if you're an accounting firm like Deloitte and you're you know, supporting like the M&A activities of, of uh, let's say a private equity company um, with its acquisitions, you're not just going to give a strategy and say, hey, go buy a billion dollar company and like goodbye, right? They probably will have to stay put and try to help you go through the books of the company or trying to, to acquire and carry out that process and make sure all the legal and compliances are, are taken care of. Um, and then, of course, that's just one kind of implementation and business transformation. You know, we're talking about IT, which is a very hot um, topic today, a lot of digital transformations, work that, you know, IBM, uh, Accenture, Deloitte, PwC, Booz Allen, Hamilton uh, are, are very involved in. Um, and then you can see probably a lot of new subdivision and subsidiaries coming from tech companies as well that want to be part of this process, right? Like Google, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, web services, those guys have their own consultants that sort of you know, um, participate in, in this segment as well. Uh, so very similarly, right, you provide the infrastructure design, the, the, the sort of the strategy, and then you go in, you bring developers, you partner with vendors, you bring in tools, and, and you implement solutions there um, to build up the, the whole entire IT infrastructure. So you manage just the whole entire um, software lifecycle um, for, for your clients. And of course, there's more of the outliers, the outsourcing type. You know, I don't think any of us will be um, really part of those, but don't be surprised if you hear, um, you know, those are companies that outsource, you know, human resources, uh, PMO support, um, you know, those are considered as consulting companies as well. So, you know, in the future, if you're interested to, um, to, to look into those, you know, um, that, that's definitely an interesting uh, area to consider. Um, so, you know, just to, you know, to, to round up this slide here uh, and, and want to give a response to some of your uh, uh you know, your, your feedbacks from the survey. Um, I do think it all falls into the um, general idea of providing an, a service, um, giving advice and solving a problem. And there's no get around that, right? But it's really the form of delivery um, and the length of the delivery and yeah, the scope of the delivery that um, a lot of times dictates um, the different um, types of solution and how um, a company carries out its day-to-day -day businesses. Um, so um, give a few minutes for you guys to put any questions about the industry uh, while I address um, uh, Wesley's uh, uh, and, and I see a few more questions that came in. Uh, so maybe we can uh, take a look at those. Uh, but feel free again to, to ask questions related to the industry um, in, in the chat and I'll try my best to, to answer them. Okay, so first question, back to my experience. What made you look for a switch from consulting to private inequity? Um, I think that, that, that that's a, a very good question. Um, and uh, I would say it's, it's the only sort of um, overlapping theme that I see is uh, really the, the, the data and the IT side of things. Um, you know, I, I, and I, to be honest, when I got out of grad school, like I barely know how to operate like Google Drive. Uh, I didn't know how to write a single line of code. Uh, I was, you know, as technologically um, incompetent as you can imagine. Um, so for me, I, I really wanted to, to you know, um, improve um, myself in that area. And that's why, you know, I did the master's training about informatics, learn a little bit more about SQL, you know, big data queries, Pythons, um, and just some general database principles. Um, and from there, you know, I, I sort of transformed myself a little bit in Booz Allen and got more involved in IT-oriented projects. Um, and I fell in love with it, right? I think um, you can't really get away from, you know, being IT nowadays, everyone's talking about it. Um, and, you know, you, you know, when the right time came, you know, um, there's some connections with private equity companies. And, and I realized the financial industry had some very peculiar approaches um, and, and um, sort of uh, a little bit of lacking in, in the, IP space. And so, you know, that, that provides a very strong opportunity for personal growth, but also a, a, a good environment to kind of pick up um, some of the more uh, foundational IT work that I may not be able to, to, to catch up to or even presented the opportunity to work with in, in more established technology companies, right? Um, 
So, and, and personally, I have a very strong interest in private equity um, and investment. So I think this presented the, the best environment um, for me to try to kill two birds with one stone in terms of, you know, um, gaining that IT experience, um, continue honing that, that, that aspect, um, but also be exposed to the business and then that side of the industry. Um, so hopefully, Wesley, that, that um, you know, gave you a, a a, a clear response there. I mean, it's not really you know anything bad about consulting that led to the switch. Um, I think it's really just um, consulting actually in, in return offered me the opportunity um, to be flexible and make that switch. So I actually owe a lot to consulting there. Um, okay, so during my rambling, uh, we still have uh, just one question. So um, again, don't be shy. Um, you know, feel free to just add any ask anything here. I see Matthew asks, what is the definition of transformation and as you're using in these contexts? Um, I think it's a very vague term. I think that's a very good question. Um, I think you can think of transformation it pretty much um, in every possible way you can think of that. A company is looking to improve, um, you know, whether it's, you know, it's, it's normal business processes, it's, you know, functional processes, or even like just general operational uh, processes. Um, I think a lot of time um, today, IT transformation, it's really about, you know, how can we um, establish better security? I think that's a huge one today. Um, how do we um, clean up our data uh, and utilize our information that we've been um, archiving pretty much for a very long time, right? Um, adoption is a huge one. Um, you know, how do we make sure the people within our firm or our customers adopt to our um, newer products um, in this newer landscape, um, you know, especially with, you know, the aging um, of their customer, you know, bases, you know, how do we, you know, align ourselves with like, you know, the Gen Z's and the younger folks, you know, that, that those are all like within the scope of transformation, right? Uh, and of course, you have those who are a little bit more institutional and, and traditional, um, you know, like we want to make pivots, we want to acquire companies, we want to, um, you know, sell part of our company, like those are all considered you know, transformations. And, and, you know, of course, those are not easy processes. Um, and that's why a lot of times um, implementation is very important to see the carry out of that process. Uh, you know, strategy is, is really just providing that blueprint, right? You sort of like the architect, you just draw out the design um, and, you know, hopefully you can find the right, you know, uh, people to help, you know, set up the design and, and, and implement it. But, um, a lot of times companies like to do that simultaneously because, um, you know, one, they, the, the contracts are much longer, um, you build a much stronger um, client relationship, um, and, and the, the scope of work is definitely a lot larger. So, you know, that's why if you look at those companies that are here involved in the transformation process, they're, they're pretty, you know, large um, companies with over like 10 to 20,000 employees, right? Where on the left-hand side, you have like the BCG, the McKinsey's, you know, um, and the LEK is like, we're just talking about like hundreds of thousands of people. So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, what transformation and, and how the different consulting firms are, are, are approaching that um, from different areas. Okay, um, oh, seems like the pipeline from grad school to PE is quite a bit more uh, opaque than going on the existing summer associate. Am I wrong on that? Is there a reason for it? Um, I'll be honest with you. I think that's a very good question. Um, I don't know if the like the PEVC group is still on campus, but when I was graduating, there were a lot of traction among the student groups and the professional career offices uh, in terms of attracting like PEVC companies to to to, to, to look for grad students. So I think um, informally there is actually a lot of interest because. Um, these companies are slow adopters to our PhD training. Uh, they're starting to see values. Um, and and uh, there's a lot of sort of uh, um, attraction to uh, the research side of things. Um, and, and, and I actually see a lot of my colleagues as grad students at times, you know, got into, um, you know, top investment firms, investment banking companies, you know, Bank of America. I had a, I had a colleague from my, my year. Um, so I think naturally there is no resistance, um, you know, if the resources are available. However, I think it's um, because it's such a non-obvious um, transition, um, consulting is sort of became the mainstream trend. And that's why you hear a lot about it. 
Um, and that's why there is probably a greater amount of like um, formal summer associate programs internship that, you know, it's available. And, and I, I guess my intention of responding this way is just to make sure you don't feel discouraged like as the PEVC type of opportunities are like non-existent or, you know, um, they, they are, they're not equally available. I think they are. They're just not as well presented to, to the community as it should. As it sounds like right from your question, things may have changed since I left Hopkins. Um, but uh, definitely, you know, don't be shy to reach out to these companies, send out cold emails and, and let them know what your expertise are and, and what you're working at. Um, that, that's, that's definitely, there's definitely a huge value, right? Especially in the biotech, um, the healthcare industry to, to have PhDs like us to, to be to making to be making um, part of making um, investment decisions. So uh, hopefully that helps a little bit. All right. So moving on. Um, firm hierarchies. You know, obviously this is not the most accurate um, and representative um, depiction of what every firm looks like. Um, but I think overall it, it drives the message across. Um, in terms of like the, the years of experiences, the idols, the, the, the sort of the uh, who sits on top and, and things like that. So, you know, obviously uh, I don't think we will be entering at, as an intern, right? Um, I mean, uh, I guess take that back, you know, as a grad student, you can start as an intern, right? But that's the short term. But for long-term entry level, um, we'll probably come straight, you know, in between level one and level two. Um, you know, uh, it depends on what company you're looking for. Um, I think the ones that are more um, strapped tight with um, their recruitment resources will probably hire someone at a higher level. Um, so that means that interview process is going to be a lot more uh, you know, like a, a challenging, um, a lot more competitions, right? A perfect example is like McKinsey. You know, when you come in, you'll probably start as like an associate right away. Um, and I think one of the big difference between level two and level one is they want to see how well prepared you are um, if I throw you into the professional world. So it's really about that um, you know, ability to, to give off you know, uh, professionalism and that like work experience type of vibe, right? Because obviously none of us as a grad student had work experience. Um, and then that's always sort of the, the toughest thing that I found when I was um, interviewing for different companies and people tend to lowball you a little bit with your, your position and your salaries, um, you know, at level, level one. Uh, but I mean, kind of give or take, you kind of have to accept the fact that, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's the reality. Um, but, you know, obviously because we have the PhD and we're very smart people, um, we're very well trained um, and in many different areas, the soft skills and the hard skills, it's very easy to, to go from level one to level two, right? As you can see from, from my experience, um, I would say I started more of like at 1.5 as a senior consultant and I got up to associate, you know, in less than two years and I've seen people who've done it faster, right? Um, and of course that depends on many factors, you know, they're maybe smarter, they work harder, um, but also depends on the contract and, and the type of team that you're a part of. Um, so ultimately, you know, you're, you're gonna become a project manager and a lot of people call it engagement managers, you know, lead senior associates, uh, you know, those are um, pretty much like project leads. They are more involved in building that business processes um, and, 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 you know, be part of like the strategy design part uh, of uh, the business. Um, and of course, then, you know, you move up, be a partner director, you literally just, you know, make decisions and hang out with your clients and kind of groom that relationship, right? You know, go to the golf course, you know, take them to dinner, you know, talk about their needs. Um, so, you know, along the way, I think, um, you know, the consulting skills has to be there, uh, but it's just really how you, you know, implement it on a day-to-day -day basis and the scale of the work um, and, and sort of the long-term, short-term vision that you have with your client. Um, that's what differentiate um, or what differentiates some of these roles. But um, again, just for grad students, I think we sort of come in at the level one and level two. Um, so that, that involves a lot of, you know, sort of day-to-day -day work with the clients. Um, and as you moved up, it's going to be a little bit more of the business development side of things. Um, so before I, I dive deeper into the rules and responsibility and sort of what are the myths and, and facts uh, with being a consultant and, and the different levels, uh, let's address Hannah's question uh, about typical salaries. Um, so uh, again, it depends on different companies uh, and where your locations 
um, are. Um, I would say, you know, um, and I'm just gonna give like actual numbers, right? I would say somewhere from 80 to 120, it's probably um, a good starting position. Um, of course, you know, companies are a little bit more boutique and have more resources and are located in like, you know, the expensive cities like New York, Boston, um, you know, certainly there will be more on the higher end, right? Uh, before others that are, you know, um, much larger, uh, you know, they have uh, a pretty strong workforce, they're pretty established, longer contracts like Booz Allen, um, BWC, like the Deloitte's, um, you might expect more of the medium and the, the lower side of things, right? Um, but again, the main contribution, uh, the main contributor to, to your salary is really um, a lot of factors. Right? I think we keep that in mind, you know, when you graduate, you know, how much they want you, your professional experience, you know, like, I obviously don't have professional experience, but, you know, the type of expertise that you have, like, for example, if you're working on, like, immunology and they're looking for someone to do, like, you know, um, consulting on, uh, with, like, work about, like, T-cell technologies, then, you know, right off the bat, you have a lot more leverage over how you negotiate your salaries, right? So I think, you know, don't be shy to, to talk with your, your colleagues and, and your, um, you know, to, to people that are in the industry that you know um, about what are potential starting points. I obviously have very good resources at, uh, at Booz Allen who gave me a heads up of what, um, you know, I should be asking for. And that process was very smooth and, and very pleasant. Um, there's no antagonism there. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's a very, very fair question. So I'm glad you guys are asking that very specifically. Um, hopefully that gives you a, a sense uh, and a little bit of hope. Um, um, coming out of grad school, um, that you'll be making some money. Um, Michelle asked, uh, if some companies have a sitting on a bench arrangement for consultants uh, that may be between contracts. So I think that's uh, sort of one of the, 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 the elements that I want to cover in my next slide. So let's, let's head over there and, and, and talk about that a little bit. So um, I think there, there's a concept that uh, we're not aware of. Um, especially when we haven't started in the industry, that's a little bit um, of a hidden fact that I think it'll be important to consider, especially when you go into the company, it's good to, to know your landscape, right? Before you, you, you dive straight in and start working. Um, so you can better position yourself or maybe talk to the right people and ask for the right advice. So the biggest thing in consulting is really your, your billability, um, you know, how, how billable you are. Um, because a lot of times consulting companies don't like, pay your salary out of pocket, right? They want to, you know, um, take the money from contracts and then pay you a portion and then make the margin, right? So it's best if they are, you know, covering your compensation using the client's money than everything else um, in their own pocket. So um, obviously that's a very huge metric um, in terms of how billable you are. And billable could be, um, look at it from, you know, sort of two different aspects, um, you know, contract work, you know, client work, right? What is actual client work, right? Um, like, are you on site? Are you supporting tasks that are long-term, short-term? What are the percentages that covers your billability, right? For example, you might be 50% here, 50% there. Um, again, that presents a brand new dynamic of your, um, you know, work-life balance and how, how you do things on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but one thing I do want to highlight, um, I think a lot of people don't realize um, and I can see from your responses, that's pretty much missing. It's business development. Um, I think you have to appreciate the fact that when you're a consultant for a company, you're gonna spend a lot of time um, promoting the business development of the act of your, of your own firm, right? And that comprises of writing proposals, uh, right? You know, how do we get contracts? It's not like a case competition, right? You hand it over a case packet and boom, you know, let's start working. It doesn't really work like that. It's, you have to really write a proposal, compete, get a responses. You might have to write a few more proposals, uh, meet with the clients, have some interviews as a group, like, you know, showcase your, 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 your strategy a little bit, you know, a lot of sort of back and forth in between there um, that, you know, obviously as an entry level, um, you're not going to be part of a lot, right? Obviously people are going to give you experience. You're going to help out with that process. But as I mentioned, the partners are going to dictate the pace and how that's being done. And then you have to, the senior folks who are, you know, on the ground and on the management team to sort of help make those decisions and, and packaging the, 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 uh, the service. Right? And obviously, we're just entry level consultants kind of have helping that out. Right. But, you know, again, the goal is so that, you know, if you want to stay in consulting, you'll continue to 
to grow towards that path. So you know how to write proposals, you know how to groom client relationships um, and, and you know, capture business. So those are some of the hot buzzwords, right? So you know, don't forget about business development. I think that's the, the ultimate key. Um, you know, it's not all about client work. You know, by the end of the day, you know, the firm needs to make money. Uh, you know, that's that's the most important thing. Um, and sometimes the client work, it's 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 a it could be differentiated in many different stages. Sometimes if they bought a contract already, you know, the strategy and the solution is pretty much there. Um, you know, you just have to execute it, right? I mean, like some of you wrote, um, you know write reports, you know, um, you know, interpret data, right, research on something, like right? that's just maybe part of a solution that the partners and, and the clients have already agreed to. Um, so keep that in mind. And of course, you know, other marketing works are also very important. Um, you know, consulting firms are like their own little communities, like our, your little own, you know, Hopkins student club, right? I see a lot of similarity. Um, it's being part of the, the consulting club president and, and being part of a consulting firm. You're trying to capture pro bono uh, uh, projects for the community, and then you're trying to set up events, you know, promote your brand, um, you know, invite people, get more resources from the university. It's very similar, right? And that's why don't, don't underestimate being part of these student groups because it gives you um, the experience of, of being part of a uh, uh, um, an organization that that trying to function in a very similar way. So going back to Hannah's question on the beach, on the bench, uh, some companies put it, um, that's probably, you know, not ideal. Um, and, and um, you know, that's, you know, it, it depends on what you're doing on the beach and on the bench. Obviously, you know, you can imagine you're a CEO of a company, you're a manager, you probably want your folks to be as efficient as possible, right? Um, so, you know, it again, I think the question is more, you know, what, what kind of arrangement there are um, for those who are on the beach and on the bench, right? Um, definitely, I think firms, even the ones I, I've been part of, um, I've known about and have friends that work in, they try very hard to give resources and promote people to be off the bench as much as possible. Like, for example, at Booz Allen, we have um, these data hubs that have like um, open marketplace for contracts, you know, open listings for looking for people looking for certain types of, um, you know, colleagues and experiences. You can post your resume there and people can look for it. Um, so there are many different things you can do. Um, you can you know, support business development. You can just write proposals all day long if you want. Um, you know, you can definitely get hours covered from that. Um, but by the end of the day, the underlining theme is you work hard, you network hard, um, you find the right opportunities. You're not going to be on the bench. So um, that, that's, that's all I can say, right? Um, you know, so, you know, filling the hours, right? Like I said, you know, how efficient you are, how billable you are really depends on many different things, right? You don't just step into a firm again and hand in the case packet and then you start working. Um, there's a lot of um, sort of interchangeable parts and, and uh, interpersonal um, uh, factors that comes into play. You know, how you network with your with folks in the firm, um, you know, how, and that really can dictate how you get staff on contracts, right? Um, a lot of times, you know, you may not even be part of a contract to do the work, but they might just staff you for, um, you know, for marketability, marketability, um, for, you know, showcasing their, their, their staffing resources, you know, showcasing a very specific expertise from the firm. And you know, those are all great opportunities, right, to get yourself out there. But if you don't network, you don't present yourself out there, people won't know who you are and your background and what you're good at. Um, and obviously, you know, adjusting, finding the right percent of hours of work. Um, you know, I came from a company that's pretty much rent number one and work life balance all the time. And now I'm in New York, you know, a completely different setting. Um, I think, you know, good thing with consulting and, and you know, being able to, to sort of um, determine the percent of work, um, you know, by networking and talking to your managers and adjusting contract percentages and all that. It really is important to, to helping you being successful because there's just so much different kinds of thing that you can do to build up your own brand in a company. Um, so that's definitely something to think about, uh, you know, when you enter a new consulting company, you know, what, what are some of the, the things I want to focus on first and how can I adjust my, my percentages, uh, you know, to, to maximize those, those, uh, those needs. Um, and of course, always talk about overtime, right? Extra hours. Are you willing to, to, to take the extra mile? Right. I know, you know, I was 100% all the time at Booz Allen in my three years, you know, thankfully, 
I'm very grateful for the opportunities, but I do spend a lot of time outside, right? You know, giving talks, um, you know, marketing our brand, setting up internship programs, uh, writing proposals, you know, um, having lunches and talk to clients, um, even consultants from other firms, right? To, to try to capture some, some intels. Um, so, you know, uh, volunteering opportunities. So those are all extra hours that you want to put in, right? But um, I think the good thing about consulting is, um, you get what you put in, you know, everything you put in has a purpose and, and uh, definitely, you know, how efficient you are um, will determine how far you go and people will, will notice uh, by your effort. All right, so uh, quite a bit in that in this slide here. Um, so I see a few questions. Uh, I see uh, one question is what is on the beach? Um, okay, maybe I'll take a step back and explain a little bit. Um, so when you're on a when you're in a consulting company, you're not always staffed on client work. So for example, it's kind of like you're in the lab right now, but you don't have a project. Um, so what would you do during that time, right? Like let's say you know you're maybe a new grad student, or maybe you're a, 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 a seasoned grad student. You finish a project already, um, and you're kind of waiting to pick up a new one, or maybe you got kicked out of a project, or you join a new lab and you're like trying to figure out what's the right project for you. Um, that's what on the beach means. Like you're literally not staff on a contract. You are billing your company's hours. You're not billing the contract hours. Um, so the company's directly paying you for sitting in the office just and trying to find things for you to do, um, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's why, you know, we try to avoid that unless you're really contributing, you know, a lot for internal purposes, like business development, writing proposals and, and stuff like that. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Like when you get a job in consulting, you know, maybe a good question to ask is, am I going to be staffed immediately or am I um, going to be on a bench for, for a while? Because the, the determine, uh, depending on what the, the response is, um, you know, your, your approach is going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, if you're going to be on a bench to start with, you probably want to start networking early and, and understanding that the infrastructure, um, the framework of the company and, and, and find the best way to, to start you know, getting on client contracts and things like that. Um, you know, if your staff right away, maybe they're hiring you for a specific role or for a specific expertise and good, you know, maybe you have a good starting point. Um, but hopefully, uh, Matthew, that, that that answers your question a little bit. Um, so I see Michelle had a comment. Uh, the federal budget sequestration years were, were tough. Um, I, I think that's, that's a more of a comment about uh, I, you know, hopefully I'm interpreting this correctly, Michelle. If not, you know, feel free to correct me. Um, I think this is, yeah, it depends really on, on you know, the, the, the return, right, uh, of the company and how, how well they bring in contracts and things like that. And that's why, you know, you have to be very transparent with your team in terms of, you know, how well we're doing this year, how many contracts are there, um, you know, what are the sort of the forecasts so you can, you know, better anticip anticipate a little bit on, on what it's like, right? So, you know, being, again, being consulting, it's like you have to go in and find a job within consulting, you know? It's not like you find a job in a company, you're done. Um, there's a little bit of effort that, you know, you should be mindful of that, that sh you know, it's required for, for finding actual work uh, in, in the company. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, yeah, I think that's definitely um, a good reason. Um, really depends on the firm's performance. And sometimes, you know, companies don't recruit or hire as much because they just don't have the contract work. Uh, work right and, and and people um, are put on the bench but they don't have the cash flow to, to, to keep feeding you you know uh, for not doing much and maybe there's just not that much of business development available so you know, there's just many different ways um, to maneuver uh, you know the the, the, the staffing uh, component of the company so all right any more questions about roles and responsibility uh, you know, I'll give a few minutes just again to emphasize, you know, consulting is not just, you know, talking to clients, building out decks and, uh, you know, presenting and traveling. There's a lot more to it um, internally, um, externally as well. Um, and there's also some risk. Um, you know, it's not always safe to be in the company if you're on a bench. So things to, to be aware of. Um, and maybe hopefully this will be good things for you guys to think about going to interviews and to ask interviewers. Um, it will also illustrate, you know, how much you've researched and know about this industry. So um, I hope this helps. 
Uh, okay. Great. So day-to-day -day use cases. Um, so I guess I'll, yeah, I'll share with you guys a little bit about what I used to do um, with the federal clients. Again, Booz Allen is more um, you know, business transformation, um, IT implementation. So my work was um, a little bit more um, longer in scope, uh, larger in dollar amounts, um, more integrated with other teams and other departments. Um, you know, um, and uh, mostly, you know, I was uh, a life scientist, so you know, I I was more appropriate to be in the health market, right? And that's why you see here my two main clients were, uh, you know, the FDA and the NIH. So I'll I'll just speak to those a little bit. So when I was in the FDA, that was really the first time I was exposed to uh, like software lifecycle management um, development type of work. Um, so we we're really there just to implement the IT solutions for um, um, the Office of Business Informatics. So um, there's a huge need for that in the FDA because, you know, uh, there's always, a, 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 you know, a shit ton of application that comes in for drug applications, right? Like the NDAs, the BLAs, the ANDAs, uh, you know, um, the INDs, especially, you know, during COVID, you know, I definitely was very, I, it was a very eye-opening experience being part of a system and a workflow um, that pretty much dictate the pace of, um, you know, all the different, you know, technologies and, and, and drugs that are COVID related and to trying to push through the pipeline um, more and more, uh, more, much quicker. Um, so that was really cool. And pretty much the IT solutions we were working on is to help manage these applications and, and um, also make sure that um, their operations and review processes are, are, are in sync, right? With historical information um, and, and different departments because the review process is very complicated. Um, you know, I think it's easy to outline it. It's easy to think about it. We're all scientists. We're familiar um, with the different phases and the clinical and all that. But the people involved, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very um, complicated process um, and the timing of things. Um, so there's definitely a lot of um, nuances that I learned from, from that experience just about the drug approval process. Um, so you know, on a day-to-day -day process, I think uh, we do, we offer a lot of production support um, and also enhancement design. So we're kind of building the plane as we're flying it um, in a way. We wanna make sure things don't break. We talk to reviewers, stakeholders, we help um, manage some of the um, drug reviews that are coming in, um, different priorities. Um, think of ways to sort of enhance how the FDA um, you know, make decisions um, and review their documentations. Um, how do we use the data to drive some of the decisions that they make? Um, try to um, improve adoptions um, with other users um, in the um, uh, in the FDA. Um, there are many offices in the FDA. Um, too much for me to remember. Um, but one of the missions of our client, the Office of Business Informatics, is to sort of drive technology right across the entire um, um, White Oak campus. Um, so it's really cool to be able to work with reviewers um, and scientists from uh, many different departments um, and, and hear their needs and, and, and thoughts. Um, so, so that's what I did with the FDA. Um, it was a very technical project. Um, I worked with developers. Um, I worked with a lot of consultants from uh, different companies, um, Deloitte, IBM, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I learned a lot about, you know, um, working with your competitions, but also fencing off your competitions. Um, so those are those are very important uh, important traits. Um, so let me make sure my computer it's uh, it's right out of battery, so I don't just like disappear from you guys. Um, yeah, NIH was a little bit different. Uh, wanted a little bit of a different flavor of work. Um, I was a data scientist there. Um, you know, I worked with the National Cancer Institute, uh, the Surveillance Research Program. Um, the program, you know, itself pretty much is like a business that oversees all the cancer registries across the U.S., right? How they gather data um, with hospitals, with clinics, um, the new types of data they're trying to gather. How do we, um, you know, integrate those data into the existing systems? You know, how do we de-identify patient information, build new pipelines? Um, you know, we did a lot of work with like Epic, right? Like EMR, HR providers, um, hospitals, private public hospitals, and, and really helping um, you know, the, the surveillance research program and making decisions. So we did a lot of research there. Well, that was a little bit more like strategy consulting. Um, did a lot of analysis on different um, uh, um, imaging tools, right? They're interested in acquiring cancer images, whole slide images, 
um, and how they should spend their grant money. You know, I'm not going to get into that, but um, we, 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 we were able to sort of become the liaison for um, our client uh, with other consulting firms, with other technology companies, and, and into expressing their interests, um, you know, their budget, and, and trying to you know, see what's the best we can get in return. Um, and I think that's all part of helping um, our client define their strategic priorities and roadmap. Um, so that was a very cool project. It was much smaller. It was just me and an engagement manager and a very strategic project. Um, so definitely learn a lot about the, uh, our, our, our client in general um, and sort of uh, more of the data initiative from, from the health side. Um, so hopefully that gives a little bit of a high level. Um, of what I did um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think if you're interested, what I do here at KKR, uh, very a little bit similar to a little bit of both of these experiences. You know, I work with, I manage just development teams, um, analysts, I work with investors, I work with uh, client service providers, um, you know, in pretty much going through their whole entire day, right? Um, and, and providing them support um, understanding areas we can automate and, and enhance and then kind of seeing that um, you know come to fruition um, and being part of that process uh, is just a lot of fun um, but definitely uh, it's, it's very similar right it's just that now I became a client <laughs> um, we work with um, you know some big four consulting firms um, and and at the same time uh, you know we drive the agenda um, you know we we let other people implement for us um, and uh, um, just a little bit of such role, but by the end of the day, you know, I also have internal stakeholders that we have to work with. Um, they sort of serve as a client too. Um, definitely that, you know, um, posture of servicing, of serving, uh, it's still there. It's not going away. Um, so hopefully that's a, that gives you a little bit of uh, my current status. Um, any questions about use cases, my day-to-day? anything that I might not have captured. Um, definitely, I think uh, it was involved in a lot of business development as well. Um, like I said, you know, some of the, these contracts were strategic contracts. And what that means is like, you know, the firm may not make money, but they want to be there, right? Um, to be friends uh, with the clients, um, to position themselves, to acquire qualities that they didn't have in, uh, in the past, right? And then, you know, being able to outline those and, and in, uh, in contracts and proposals are, are very, very uh, impactful. So um, that, that, that was one thing that I really enjoyed. It was being part of that business development process um, and seeing, you know, um, team, uh, your, your company winning big contracts and being part of that proposal writing team is a very, very good feeling. Um, so, all right, any questions or thoughts? All right. If not, uh, hopefully everyone is still awake. Um, I think we're almost there. Um, and and uh, this is, uh, I think it's a very interesting slide um, that I wouldn't be able to put together unless, you know, I, I um, moved out of consulting. Um, and, and it's a very interesting perspective that I felt like, you know, I didn't have when I was a, a student and, and hearing from the other consultants. Um, and um, exiting consulting, um, uh, pros and cons. Um, I, I think, um, actually, Christine, are, are you there, Christine? I'm here, yes. Right, still awake and learning, right? So um, give me one That's second. Right. Let, me, let me go over <laughs> to the other side and plug in my computer. I don't want to lose you guys, so um, I'll be right back. Okay, no problem. So we'll have like a two-minute intermission, everybody.
And just in case you didn't catch what happened just a moment ago, Felix is just taking a short break in order to plug in his laptop. So just taking a little breather, a little intermission, and we'll be back in a moment. All right, I'm back. Can you hear me, Christine? Yes, we can hear you. We can't right. see you though. Uh, I'll turn on my camera. Sorry. Okay, perfect. No worries. Yeah. Um, yep, apologize. No All right. worries. So let's there continue. You okay. Yep. So, you know, I think um, there's a lot of pros and cons uh, with exiting the, the industry. And these are things that we should be uh, aware of. Um, you know, certainly I think, uh, a lot of people think that, you know, when consulting, you're, you're meant to exit the field very quickly, but that's not the case. You know, I have a lot of friends who are there for many years, um, over decades, and they really enjoyed it, right? And I see the reason why they do. Um, so I think it's very important to also give that aspect a little shout out. Um, so, you know, from the pro side, I think, um, you know, being in consulting, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, on the, I guess the pro of exiting, right? Um, it's, you get a very nice resume. Uh, you know, people know what consultants bring to the table, um, how organized and uh, professional we are, um, you know, how sort of client facing and, and you know, service um, oriented um, we are as consultants. Um, so you, you're not gonna get anything wrong from, from leaving the, the, the industry. Um, and I think flexibility, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. Um, you know, if you exit consulting, obviously consulting, it, it, you're, a lot of the work you're doing, it's a uh, contract oriented, right? Um, it's, you know, everything's within scope, um, you know, what the clients have agreed to pay, um, you know, so especially as an entry level, you know, uh, lower level, um, you know, uh, uh, consultant in the hierarchy, you know, you don't have that much flexibility to make decisions and to, to, to contribute to the solution. So, um, you know, a lot of things are contract binding. Um, and, and I think I find that a, a sort of an interesting dynamic um, that you won't find, right, if you're, you know, working for a, 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 your, your own company um, and your own stakeholders. Um, so, you know, after if you, another thing that's that potentially will be a good thing if you, if you exit consulting is you get to integrate into a specific industry and culture, right? In consulting, you're all over the place. You, know, you might have long contracts, short contracts. It's very hard to build, like, you know, something specific, right? Uh, unless you're, you're, you're saying, oh, I'm going to stick to this client for like my whole life or I'm stick to this industry my whole life, um, you know, but you, by the end of the day, you're still a consultant, you know, you're still, you know, part of, you know, a, a Deloitte, a, a Booz Allen, you know, uh, BCG. You're not really like, oh, I came from, you know, pharmaceutical or something like that. So definitely that's something to consider. Um, and obviously stability and focus, right? I think some of the questions uh, I've gotten from uh, um, from the survey was work-life balance, right? I'm curious about that. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I think every industry has their pros and cons in work-life balance, but obviously I understand consulting naturally uh, it's a little bit difficult, right? Because one, um, you have to find work if you don't have work, right? Uh, it's not like, oh, I'm just gonna have a chill day at work today. You probably don't want that. Um, the other is um, definitely it's because it's contract oriented. You know, you're on call all the time. If the client needs you, you're not gonna say no, right? I mean, there's pros and cons there. You know, if you're if you're working beyond the scope, then yeah, you, know, you don't have to respond. But most of the time, you know, for to give out good vibe, your your managers or even yourself will probably want to. Um, uh, you know, to be a good sports about that. Um, and, you know, the, the stability focus, again, is very important too, because, you know, in consulting, especially if you're trying to climb up the ladder, right, you do a lot of business development. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of hours outside of your own time. Um, and and um, obviously a lot of proposal writing, a lot of deadlines, you know, because sometimes your, your clients are not going to be like, oh, I'm going to give you five months to write your proposal, right? Like have all the time you need to write your thesis. It's not like that. It's literally your PI coming to you and say, hey, finish your thesis in like two weeks. And you got to write, put the find the right people, staff the right people, scramble, right? So you can imagine how many, you know, tick outs that's going to, it's going to require um, to get that uh, over the line. Uh, so I've been part of those too. You know, there are nice, there's a few nights I work till like four or five a.m. just to you know make sure the proposal looked good by by the morning so the leadership can review it. Um, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's definitely a little bit more unexpected, right? 
Um, and I think you do get paid um, a little bit better, especially once you come out of consulting. And that's also a lot of reason why um, some big shots don't leave consulting is because companies just can't afford them. <laughs> you know, um, if, I'm a, if I'm a company and I just need your expertise real quick, I, I'd rather pay you, you know, 300K um, than paying you 300 for like, you know, half a year or a year than paying you like 300K for like the rest of your life, right? Um, so, you know, th there is definitely a lot more compensation bonuses because now you're working, you know, for the interests of your own company, right? Um, you know, it, uh, I, I personally think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's easier to, to negotiate there. And there's no contract type of um, stipulation there to, 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 to take that away from your, your negotiation, right? I think internal company um, negotiations are more depending on performance and then, um, you know, the performance of the company, right? That dictates the bonus and some consulting, you know, some companies you gotta, you gotta um, win contracts before you get, you know, bonuses. So there's a lot of sort of um, prerequisites there. So hopefully these are pretty obvious. Um, if not, you know, hopefully you learned something new today, but you know, why would you wanna stay in consulting? So the cons, right, of, of leaving um, the industry. I think, um, you know, once you kind of establish yourself in a company, just like you establish yourself in a lab, you know, hopefully you guys don't really feel this way, but there's not a lot of wiggle room to, to make a change. You know, you can't say, oh, I wanna work on this project. And then suddenly be like, hey boss, I wanna work on another project. I wanna, you know, do imaging the next day when I've never done it before. In consulting, there's a lot more um, legroom for horizontal movements like that, right? Um, you know, you can roll off projects, you can talk to your managers, you can try to develop a specific skill set. You have more resources to, to take courses, um, to be um, reimbursed, um, you know, supported um, education. I'm sure a company does that too, but again, you know, you know, you, if you wanted to try something a little bit different, it's, it's kind of hard um, to, to, you know, the chances are you're not going to have that much more, uh, you know, availability. Um, um, when you're not a consultant. Um, so, so definitely consider that, you know, if you like trying new things and just continue to transform yourself and your expertise, you know, maybe staying consulting for a little bit will be, um, will be, will be good. Um, another thing it's the informality and lack of definitions, right? So that's sort of like the opposite of the pearls of flexibility. You know, if you're a type, type of person who really likes to work like with a direct guideline or protocol, right? Or a specific goal or vision, then maybe you know being in consulting is better because everything's already scoped out and agreed to ahead of time. Um, you know you can't be slacking and say, "Oh, I don't want to document this. I don't want to reach to this milestone." You can't really do that. But if you're working for an internal company, right, like internally for a company, you can definitely you know, you know kind of work around that. It's kind of like at home, right? You can say, "I'll do my laundry later," you know. But when you're in the lab, you can't be like, "Oh, I'm going to clean up you know uh, my dishes and my beakers like later," because someone is it's going to come at you. Um, so it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So again, it depends on how much you know, formality you want, how much flexibility you want. Um, those are some things to consider. Um, and of course, if you leave a consulting firm very similarly, you know, um, you know, a good thing is you, you, you're building yourself for a specific industry and culture, but at the same time, you're stuck with it. <laughs> um, so, you know, if something goes wrong, you don't like it, um, you know, that's, that's going to be a little rough. And, 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 and a lot of times also why consult, um, you know, private companies don't hire consultants, like especially the big shots. And it's not only because they're ex expensive and they don't want to compensate for their lifetime. The other is there's just so much internal um, for someone to pick up um, that, you know, ha having a short term, you know, solution, is just not going to make sense. Like, for example, if you join the lab, you probably don't know pretty much all the in and outs and history of the lab, you know, what your PI is good at, what your PI doesn't like and all that until like your second, third year, right? Let's just be honest, right? When you're rotating and then going around, you're like all happy and fun, right? And then once you're in there, you're like, oh crap, like there's all these things that I found out, you know, about the, the lab, the politics and, and all that. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing, you know, when, you, when you're in, in a company, your, your orientation is not really, um, you know, your goal is not really to be not on the bench, but it's more like, how do I integrate myself with the people and the culture? And now, if you're like a little bit, uh, not a big fan of that kind of stuff, then, you know, consulting will give you a little bit of breathing room there. Um, steep learning curve, I think it's the same thing, right? Uh, you know, when you're in a company, there's so many things now, like, you, you know about the company, you know, the can of worms, you know, the, the, the informalities, uh, what are the gaps, you know, you kind of have to pick that up now, you know, uh, or you have to find a way to get consultants to pick it up. You know, it's not like, you know, you're a consultant, you already have the agenda and you know what to do. Um, so definitely it's, it's a little challenging, right? And expectations or responsibilities are a little greater. Uh, you're not hiding behind the firm anymore. You're not hiding behind your engagement manager anymore. You're more exposed. Um, 
So, you know, but of course with, um, you know, great power comes with great responsibility. So, you know, that's, um, that's what you get um, if you're not, if you're part of a company directly, so. Um, sure, sure, yeah. Um, so thanks for the, the comment there, Michelle. Um, any questions? Um, again, you know, just, just to be mindful, these are a lot of um, sort of coming from my own experience and perspective. Uh, so take it with a grain of salt. I'm sure other people may have different um, approaches and different thoughts. So um, definitely great to, to, to try to gather and, and, uh, and evaluate them um, holistically. Um, all right, if no questions about exiting consulting. Um, let's go through the last part. Um, I think, Christine, unfortunately, we probably won't be able to get to the case. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say, you know, I'll, I'll leave my contacts open, you know, feel free to connect with me. Um, you know, I'm always happy to, to chat with you, um, hear about your experience a little bit, you know, your concerns. I know, you know, there's a section about um, in survey, you know, what your concerns and obstacles are, and hopefully we can address some of those here, um, you know, in, in this section. But if you feel like you want to have a more extended conversation or even do some cases with me, you know, feel free to reach out as well. Um, and um, okay, so let's go through this last part about getting a job in consulting. Um, I think um, when you think about consulting, everyone thinks about case interviews, right? Uh, but there's there's a little bit more to that, right? Obviously, case interview it's like the the rate determining step. You know, you can't bust that. Like if you bust that, you're like, you know, it doesn't matter how how you know good of a friend you are with the CEO. Um, but um, just want to give you guys a little bit more perspective in, ter in terms of the whole entire life cycle of interviewing, getting a job, consulting, what to consider. Because I see a lot of students don't get interviews and they wonder why, right? And sometimes I talk to them and I realize that they spend a lot of time practicing cases, <laughs> um, but they don't spend a lot of time, you know, orienting themselves and putting themselves out there and interviewing the right and setting up, you know, the resume for interviews in the right way. Um, or even having the right timing. Right? So I think, you know, don't underestimate that. Get the conversations first, you know, get the the, the low hanging fruits first before, you, you know, you think about everything else, right? Uh, so definitely, you know, your resume is very important. Um, I think it's very hard for PhDs, for us um, scientists to, to come up with that consulting resume. I, you have no idea how difficult it was when I first started. You know, I was very um, depressed of how little experience I have, um, you know, how, how, um, you know, weak my resume seem, but, you know, don't feel discouraged, you know, definitely talk to us, talk, talk to other consultants in the field, um, you know, show, you know, be vulnerable and show your resume um, and think about ways you can um, highlight your accomplishments. You know, we're not just scientists who pipettes and like know about, you know, a specific pathway in the cell. It's, it's more than that, you know, like, like, you know, have you, you know, how many, um, you know, students you've mentored, you know, do you collaborate a lot with different labs? Where, um, you know, do you, how do you manage a project, right? Those are things you can definitely highlight, you know, in your, your resume. And, um, but of course, you know, you have to network too, right? You have to participate in, in some level of, uh, you know, business or, or consulting type of activities to, to really build that. So, you know, people won't think that you don't, you have no idea what consulting is. Um, so maybe putting something like, oh, I participate in this workshop and this, you know, class, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing, right? Um, but again, just want to emphasize, it's not like it's a requirement, like you have to be part of the consulting club or something um, for them to, 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 to get, you know, to get their attention, right? Um, and I think the timing, it's very important. Uh, a lot of people, you know, I see at least back then were like, oh, I'm going to go for, you know, McKinsey, BCG all at once. And you have like 5,000 people fighting for like two spots from like Johns Hopkins. Uh, I mean, to me, it's like, you know, that's not a very good deal, right? Not a very smart approach. Um, you know, there's many different ways to get into, you know, McKinsey in different phases, different time of your life or in different timing of the, the company's like, you know, uh, business cycle every year. Um, so think about, you know, and then that's where the networking comes into play, right? Each firm has sort of their own different agenda, their different schedule. So that's why it's important to, to understand the industry a little bit better and sort of what's the best time to, to, to swoop in, right? Like I think Michelle mentioned earlier, like their federal contracting periods, like, um, you know, the, the physical budget year, you know, when is that you know maybe when they booz allen wins new contracts deloitte win new contract new contracts accenture win new contracts they'll like start trying to like hire like fifty thousand million people right 
maybe that's a good time to go for, you know, an opportunity, um, you know, and things like that. Uh, just be mindful. I'll say be mindful, you know, for like more financial oriented companies, you know, what are the quarter closes, you know, earning seasons, like, you know, those are things that will really drive decisions. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, and I think a lot of these things you can also read about online on their websites, you know, their internship programs. Uh, there's definitely a lot of um, short programs nowadays I see, um, you know, with like, uh, you know, BCG, I'm sure you guys are aware, LEK, like there's a lot of bridge programs. I'm sure Hopkins itself and established a little bit more connections with consulting firms, internships. Those are also very, very good. Um, you know, just being able to, to be part of the consulting club and do pro bono cases. I think itself is a great experience, um, especially a lot of the pro bono cases are, are very interesting topics, very applicable. Um, and I've, I, I've seen a lot of interviewers back in the days with me were very interested in the things that I, I did. Um, um, you know, what's better than having a, like a, a simulation, right, of a real life experience of um, an actual engagement with a client. Um, so what are the most transferable skills from your PhD that you use in consulting? Um, I guess, you know, this kind of falls in the category of the slide, right? Uh, the resume part. Um, I think we don't realize how fast we analyze problems and put it into structure um, um, than most other people um, in different disciplines. Now, that's not to, you know, um, you know, disrespect anyone from other different training backgrounds, you know, obviously everyone has their own skill sets and, and, you know, specialties. But for us, I think one thing that we don't realize is actually, you know, if today I ask you guys to put together a slide deck for me about consulting, you know, on what you've learned, you can probably do it in like 15, 20 minutes. Um, especially the information is not complicated at all, right? Um, you'll probably be able to research real quick, get some really nice slides, some nice facts and just put it together, boom. That's actually not something easy. Um, you know, we do that a lot because every day, you know, we have to present, we have to be in group meeting, we have to impress our lab mates, all very smart people, our PI, it's like the most intelligent people, person in the world. It's very hard to question and be outsmarting them. So we, we are, we're conditioned to, to, to get to that point. Like if there's a given topic, a given set of data, you know, put it together, present it logically, structurally. Um, I think that's probably the most transferable skills that I have so far. Um, like, for example, one of the things with IT is I'm really good with sort of presenting the scope of a project. I'm really good with de designing and describing, you know, what the ecosystem look like for an integrated system. I mean, isn't, isn't that the same thing with like how different pathways interact with each other in a cell, right? That's how I see it. Um, and obviously testing, right? Like you have to think of different scenarios that you can break a system, you know, what are the considerations, the risk, right? That's just like testing. And what are the positive controls? What are the negative control, right? And because we have those training, we have that um, environment to condition us, you know, we, we can implement that type of approach pretty much on anything we do. Um, and I think that is probably the most transferable skills um, that I have used so far. Uh, hopefully that answered your question, Hannah. Um, and, um, you have only four minutes left, um, you know, feel free to just, you know, ask anything again, reach out to me if you want afterwards. Um, and, but I also encourage you guys to talk to as many people as you can. I'm happy to point you to other consultants and, and other, you know, ex members of the consulting club, other Hopkins alumni, um, so you can hear their perspective as well. And speaking of that, you know, resources, um, definitely there's a lot. Uh, you know, I'm sure student groups are great, fantastic ones, because they give you a little bit of what politics looks like, what an organization looks like, um, and, and some simulation of real life experience. And of course, if you do well in some of these activities, they're, they're you know, boom, resume boosters right there, right? Um, so, you know, get involved with a little bit of everything, you know, definitely not a mandatory thing. I've seen people who barely participated in anything. All they did was like, eat and sleep with their case in point book and they found a job, right? Um, it is definitely doable. Um, but I, I think it was really down to, um, you know, how you want to personalize your experience so far, how you want to approach um, and, and uh, what type of consulting, right? And that's why we talked about that in the industry that you, you want to be a part of. Um, and that's all going to determine how you, um, you build your, your, your profile um, for this career, so. Anyway, Christine, I mean, that's all I have. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, like I said, like I said, I wish we had time for a little bit of a case. Um, um, you know, I'm happy to share that with you guys. Um, this is actually a very simple question. And I just wanted to see, you know, in groups, how you guys, 
you know, approach it from high level to top down, um, low level, um, ask the right questions. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, there's no right or wrong answers in consulting in life in general. Um, it's just really perspectives um, and how you execute it and, and how we can agree upon a, a solution. So um, same principles. Great. Well, thank you so much, Felix. And let me say, I'm sure that this is true for all of our class. Really just appreciate your insights today from so many different angles around consulting, from sharing your own journey to the day-to-day -day, pros and cons, thinking about how to really maneuver in this space. Thank you so much for everything that you offered. And thank you to everyone in the course for all of your engagement. And also really appreciate your willingness to keep in touch. If you wouldn't mind sharing the case that you have in mind, we'd be very happy to distribute it to students and see about them continuing the conversation and also happy to share your contact information information as well so people can keep in touch with you. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. And thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Christine. And, and, and I just want to say, you know, thank you all for your, your responses in the Excel sheet. I think uh, in the Google form that that really drove this conversation and helped me uh, determine what's the best things to talk about. So um, keep giving the feedbacks. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, thank you again, Felix. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Take care.